many Spitfires did we have uh, based in Malta? Well, we got down to as low as four serviceable, and we, I, in fact, I led it, uh, the four out, and we we were sort of uh, with the Hun because they listened in on the white service, you know. So we thought, well, if you're listening again, we're going to fox you. So each one of us calls as a leader. Blue leader here, and white leader there, and yellow leader there, and so on. And we were all, we were all talking about that, and the uh, Germans thought we were four squadrons of Spitfires. <laughs> yeah. But I liked the Spit because I did three tours of Spitfires. I did last, I got all my kills from the Spitfire, and I got away with murder by being able to outwit and outturn the uh, uh, Bushevits and other German stuff that used to throw up at us. It was, it was much more manoeuvrable. And I liked it because you fitted it like a glove. They, they, it was a part of you, and then in combat, you um, watching everybody missing you, you're watching and see if you've got a target in front of you, and more important is watching for a measure fit coming behind you. So of course your head's revolving uh, continuously, and they say every three seconds, because that's what it takes. Uh, now the spit was part of you. I, you. I turned my head; it would turn. You know, I didn't have to fly it. It was flying, it was flying me. I was flying it automatically, instinctively, and uh, because of that, because of its marvelous maneuverability, and part of it being a glove to you, that I had a Spitfire as a favorite, definitely. It was a wonderful aircraft. It really was. And um, as I say, I never got a bullet hole in me. Three tours, and and in the midst of dogfighting, that's what one on <laughs> how I got away with it. I don't know. You must have seen rounds going past you all the time, and not one of them catching the. Oh, the, the, it's one mealy, you know. I, I try to explain dogfighting as well. So many people ask, "What's it like in a dogfight?" Well, it's difficult to, to say because it's one hell of a mealy. <laughs> Yeah. There's planes twisting all over the sky. Um, there's bombers mixing in, of course, with the air covers on the, and then there's the Messerschmitts coming out of the sun. So, yeah, a dogfight is, is is quite a, a thing to get away with, you know. How many pilots did you lose in the Molten? Uh, Twenty six a week. Twenty six um, a week. A week, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it was a tough time. Malta was more tough than the Battle of Britain. Because I always say, when people say, why do you say that? I said, well, the Battle of Britain used to come across and you had the, all the coastline, you had aerodromes, you had London, you had an awful lot of targets. Whereas in Malta, they used to come from Sicily, one little island the size of the Isle of Wight was all, all the target they wanted. And they pounded it. In fact, it was the most bombed place on earth. Yeah, it was a, a tough time. but. To me, most enjoyable. I loved it. I really did. It's, it's, uh, I know that's silly to say, isn't it? But the adrenaline flowing was uh, a sort of like you're on edge the whole time. You're on sort of a, a, a nervous really, edge. You didn't really have any downtime, did you? Like, say, so you, you know, the Battle of Britain pilots and stuff. You, you had time where you could just go down to the pub and stuff. That's really right. When well, you see, that, no, not in Malta. You see, you didn't have any time to spare whatsoever. There's three squadrons, literally ready to scramble, and scramble in turn if necessary. Well, after the October Blitz, uh, Kesseling threw everything to finish the island in October. Uh, which he didn't, of course, because we were still knocking them down as fast as they came over, and we were knocking them down. And he realised, he said, no, I'm, I'm losing too many aircraft here, we're getting nowhere, and they couldn't send the invasion troops because we would then attack them, uh, Spitfires. So um, he, he just said, that's it, we've, st we've given up Malta. And after October, nothing happened. We was, so we, we went to Sicily. I was a little poke at them as a change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we got back to sleep at night, uh, there was usually about three to four beds in a large room, and it was polished floors, um, no mattress like that. 
and they had mosquito nets then and it's amazing because mos the mosquitoes are not prevalent in, in Malta at all but it did in those days they why I don't know anyway they gave us nets so you had four uh, say four beds four nets and then somebody in his sleep this is true I would, you'd never believe this somebody in his sleep he's having a fight and you shout it's Measure them at six o'clock, and all the beds would turn. <laughs> you, you, you know, because you, 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 you turn, and the whole bed would slide over the floor. So you pull back the measurement, the, the nets to get back to sleep again. But whenever anybody shouted six o'clock, oh, that was a dangerous signal. You turn like hell. <laughs> yeah. Good old days. I, I, I love them. You know. Well, no, I shouldn't say that, but it, they were exciting, you know what I mean? No, I fully understand, yeah. Well, it's a lovely sort of bike. I, uh, the modern technician, the technical advantage today is outstripping. You know, they, it's marvellous to see it, you know. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I only had a, when I had my Norton, it was uh, just a, a cylinder and uh, that was it. You know, it roared into life and gave us propulsion, but <laughs> there was nothing fancy about it. I used to belt down the, the main road at 80 miles an hour on this Sergio Square 4. I thought it was great. <laughs> My passengers didn't think so either. <laughs> Plenty of passengers. Um, and now in, I've got an SL. Uh, uh, that's pretty fast as well. Uh, and when I take a, a passenger, I usually get from them. You're not a bloody Spitfire now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like spe speed, you see, I suppose. <laughs> I'm used to speed. But uh, you know, the, the, the donation from, from these bikes will go a long way to supporting oh, all yes, the Royal Air Force family members. And they're lovely bikes. Whoever gets one of those has got a dream. Oh boy. I wish I was young to get one. <laughs> yeah. I'd certainly belt that along a bit. <laughs> the lovely roar from that engine. Oh, it's almost like the, uh, the Merlin, you know. <laughs> Dear of me. So distinctive, you can, you'll hear that coming through villages and stuff, won't you? Oh, you can yeah. hear that coming through the village. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly, like a Merlin going over. People don't take me for marriage anyway. Would you take me for, for an old man? You don't look like your age, I'll put it that way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you don't look 97, do I? <laughs> no. no. So it's a good life, and uh, I've had an enjoyable life, there's no doubt about it. I uh, liked the Air Force, it was a, my family as part of you, um, and the squadrons as well, the, the squadron, every man was doing the same job, so um, you, the comradeship was very strong in a squadron, yeah. and you felt that that was your family, you know. Yeah, I miss the Air Force, I really do. Oh yes, that, uh, well, there's a picture in there. Um, yeah, it was when I was being decorated I, to my King George. We had to go to Buckingham's uh, house, and, and when they start, uh, they, they they get you in a room, and the Lord Chancellor, well, was one of the big ones, starts lecturing you to say, do this, do that, and especially to the big uh, burly sort of commandos, they say to him, now do not squeeze the hand of his royal purse because. He's, he's shaking hands with a lot of people and he doesn't need you to go oh like that. Uh, they, they, they're trying to keep everybody informed and it goes on and anyway uh, there was two of us. I smoked in those days because uh, they just said that when you're in combat a, a cigarette would calm your nerves. So I thought well okay, I'll try it anyway but I didn't like it I gave it up. However, then I was smoking when I was going to the palace and this other chap said, let's nip out onto behind these curtains, there's a, there's a balcony out there, we'd get out there and have a, a quick cigarette. So I thought, well, good idea. So we nipped around the curtain onto the balcony and then we were puffing away great. And who should come along but Elizabeth and Margaret Rose. Uh, so we thought, well, now what do we do? Well, so uh, the Queen, that's Elizabeth, she said, she came up, she was very polite, and said, uh, I'm afraid you're not supposed to be out here, you know. So we said, right. We didn't know whether to bow, mow, or, you know, yes, mow, I'll go with the princess, you see. So we said, 
right, so, so we nicked back into the um, the room again with the the lecture going on. Didn't say anything, but when I met the Queen uh, recently at Six O Three Squadron, uh, that's when it came up again that uh, she told me off <laughs> on the balcony <laughs> when we were sixteen. Yeah, well, apparently all the press were there, and of course they listened in on it, and they came up with all this business of. Uh, <laughs> Well, last time I met you, Mum, you told me off. That was one. <laughs> that was the one headline, you know. She's very nice. I like the Queen very much indeed. I like King George as well. He was a, a real, you know, he had an impediment of a stammer, but the, he was forced into being a king and he took it so seriously and he was so good. You know, you felt as if you were fighting the war for your king and country and, and he was worth fighting for. It really was, he was a, uh, a really good knight. But of all the families there, I've got one of the Queen, one of the pr Prince Charles, and I've also met the young princes as well. So. This flying a Spitfire is useful. <laughs> <laughs> Get you in places. It's been, uh, it's been a real, uh, no, a real go this, this time, you know, everybody wants you to talk or... Uh, it's very I've got interesting. Two talks to come. But like, like you're saying, you know, you're the, the last surviving Spitfire race from, from, the, from Malta. From Malta, yes. Mm. Yeah. It's very interesting to just listen and, you know, find out these stories. Yes, well, uh, as I say, in my book I've got uh, a display of told you all about the uh, Malta and so on. Yeah.